word come hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. and fill us now yes. father in Jesus name I pray amen amen, amen. amen. You know, brethren, I am very excited. And God bless everyone in the hearing of my voice right now. And let me show you the reason why I am excited. There are some things that we need to pray for. You know, I, how, how much minutes do I have, Sister RJ? Till 5.30. I know is, what time is it now? 4.40. So, 40 minutes or 50. What? Brethren, I feel good. I don't know if it's a vegetable that I just eat. But God is good. I feel like running. And praise the Lord. No, something is taking place. You may not see it, but you will never be the same again. Brethren, God right now has begun a new thing. And it has happened already. Your homes will never be the same again. I'm prophesying. Believe it in the name of Jesus. Your life and your experience and your walk with God will never be the same again. Young man, your life will be changed for the better. And we have to claim that in the name of Jesus. Now, jump to the next slide. Let me show you something. I'm going to, I want us to read this and then we're going to go into another series of prayer. Because we, brethren, you see when you pray, God work on your behalf. This is taken from the book, Last Day's Event. Page 189, paragraph 1. Hear what God says through a servant. Listen. A revival of true godliness. Where? Among us is the greatest and you're not reading with me. Let me start over again. You can't see it. Alright. Next Sabbath we're going to provide carrot juice. Yes, I look about the tree, the color. Color and I say, I'll do the reading. So it says, A revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our need. Do you agree? We need a revival. We don't need more preachers because guess what? The Seventh day Adventist church is full of preachers. We don't need more preachers. Sit up. I want to listen to this one. We don't need more preachers. The church is filled with preachers. They're very intelligent. I admire my brother that did the Bible study. Brethren, we know the word of God. But we have a need that is urgent and that is revival. Can everyone say amen? I need it. You need it. And hallelujah. Today is the beginning for we to have it. But he never stopped there. Let me calm down. It says, To seek this should be our first work. Sit down, please, young man. It should be our first work. So in everything that life has to offer, your first work is to be revived. All the plans that you have, whether you want to get married or you want to go back to school or you want a new house, your first work is to seek for a revival. But it never stops there. It continues. There must be earnest effort to obtain the blessing of the Lord. How are we earnest? There should be earnest effort. No. I am happy because many churches, after everybody belly full, they gone home, gone in bed, gone wrap up. Them Sabbath done. But you are here. It simply means you are different. And I have to congratulate you and encourage you to keep it up. Oh, 
hope you're not doing it because I am here. We must do good, brethren. So the servant of the law says, it must be earnest. This blessing, we must seek after it all earnestly. So as we are about to pray now, before I continue. Not because God is not willing to bestow his blessing upon us. But because we are unprepared, unprepared to receive it. God wants to give it, but we are not prepared to receive it. But we can be prepared today. We are the one that is unprepared. Our heavenly father is more willing to give his Holy Spirit to them that ask him. More than earthly parents to give good gifts to their children. Can you say amen? amen? Brethren, God has a gift that he is eager in to give. And therefore, if the gift is already available, only thing for us to do is just to take the gift. Amen. To take the gift. So another question is, if the gift is available, how do we take it? By studying the word. By prayer. By prayer and fasting and by witnessing. God will not fill us to go back home and watch bold and the beautiful and young and the reckless. No, sir. God fill us to go in the school that the world then sees and partake the gospel to others. Now let me calm down because we're going to pray. This is where I want to get you. But it is our work by confession, humiliation, repentance, and earnest prayer to fulfill the condition upon which God has promised to grant his blessing. The last part now. A revival need to be expected only in answer to what are you with me it will be given only through answers so therefore what God is saying pray for a revival pray for a revival do you want to be revived today you know brothers and sisters when I just got baptized I fell in love with a sister in the church at the age of 18. There was a browning that I, I don't know. The devil knew a weakness, you know. I love that girl. Every Sabbath I come to church just to look at her. When I leave church, I don't hear nothing about God. And if I visit church that Sabbath and that girl was not there, my Sabbath done. But Elder, I realized that every Sabbath, when after the Sabbath I was going home, I was dry. I had no joy. I had no love for God. I realized that I wasted the time until I, I was upset with myself. And I went home that night. And to be honest, that's in, I marked the date, it's um, March 18, 2009, I went home and I said, God, I need help. And I prayed and cried to God that entire night and asked him to give me a tunnel vision that I will see him. I beg God, say, Father, when I come to church, let me come to meet you. And when I went to church the next Sabbath, I sat at the front of the church. Even if the this, this speaker mouth water jump out, it would drop right on me. Because I wanted a change. I disciplined myself to listen and write down the Bible verse and go home and, and memorize them. And one Sabbath I sat down 
And as I sat, I hear the girl voice say, Amen. And I was turning to look. And I said, no, I'm not going to look. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Because when I should be in Bible class, I want to go in the lunchroom, go watch her talk. I said, no, I'm going to Bible class. And brethren, God grant me the victory. And I said, praise the Lord. God got me the deliverance and then when I got the breakthrough and getting and drawing closer to my Jesus, the girl wanted me now. You see when God says seek him first, everything we come. But she wanted me, but she never wanted a relationship with God. God will answer prayer. It was because I was upset. Aren't you upset with yourself? A revival will only come. At this moment, we're going to stand. Come, Sister Arjun, we're going to sing that song. Oh, for a flame of living fire that shines so bright in saints that bids their hearts to heaven aspire. Calm in distress. In danger bowl. Where is that spirit. Lord which dwell. In Abram's breast. And seal him nigh. Which made Paul heart. With sorrow melt. And glow. With energy divine. As we stand together please. No I want you to listen carefully. This is the instruction. Those on my left. You're going to go over to your right. Find a prayer partner in groups of two again. Those at the back, come to the front. And those at the front, go to the back. I want us to scatter around the church in twos. Now, the reason why I choose twos is because I want everyone to pray and it will not use enough time. Can we work with that? Please stand. What's it in my dear sister? 264. Stand with your hymnals, everyone. At the last stanza, just go and find a prayer partner. And we're, going to, we're going to do what God says. A revival needs to be expected only in answer to prayer. We're going to pray for the Shalom Church. We're going to pray for the Shotins, for the backsliders. I heard that 39 people baptized last year and we can't find them. We're going to pray for them. I hear that a crusade is coming up. We're going to pray for a revival. Amen. Because it is needed among us. Yes. And, 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 and don't, you don't have to pray with the person you know. Find someone who you do not know. Yeah, amen. Find someone different. So pray. we don't want to see pr pr um, family members praying, you know, right now. I want you to find somebody new to pray with. Oh, for that flame of living fire, which shone so bright in saints of old, which bade their souls to heaven aspire, come in distress, in danger bold. Where is that spirit, Lord, which dwelt? In Abram's breast and sealed, and him, sealed thine. him thine, which made Paul's heart with sorrow, with sorrow melt, and glow with and glow with energy divine. Where that spirit is from age to age, from to age, proclaim thy love and, and thought thy ways. Brighten Isaiah's vivid page and breed in David's hollow lays. Is not thy grace as, as mighty, mighty now, now as when Elijah, as when Elijah felt, its power. felt its power? When glory beamed from, from Moses' brow and Job, or Job endured the trying the hour. Trying that spirit remember, remember Lord the ancient, the days. ancient days renew thy word thy grace, thy grace restores. 
restore. And while to and thee, while to thee our, our hearts, hearts we raise. We raise on, us, on us thy hope. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit pour. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed.
Sí. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, church. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're feeling blessed, let me a shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Now, we're going to take a look on some things to pray for. Some things to pray for. And I want to turn to the slide and look on this one. Click it two times. Yes, right there. In Matthew 5, verse 44. Matthew 5, 44. As Sister Audrey remain 260. We're going to sing a song. In Matthew 5, 44, it says, But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that, that hate you. And know what Jesus says is in purple. You can see that one, right? And what must you do? Pray for them that despitefully what? No. Are you facing opposition? I don't think any one of us in here is under this bandage. But the lion of the tribe of Judah instruct us. And this, for us to do this, it will take God inside of us. To love our enemies. Brethren, we are for ourselves, we can do nothing. But with God, all things are possible. We can love our enemies. Now, do you have any enemy? Let me see a show of one. Do you have any enemy? God said, love them. Maybe you have enemy you don't even know, but love them. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Is anyone cursing you? Jesus said, bless them. Bless them. It is godly and the divine can help us. We are to pray for those who despitefully use us. You now, if you're feeling abused and misused, pray for the person that is doing the wrong. You see, when we gossip that person, it can, it can change nothing. But when you pray for them, it's a possibility that they will change. When you put them before God, I hear a sister say, God, make him bite him tongue. Pray for them. Elijah said, God, take my life. No, in prayer, you can't say anything to God, but God is going to do what is best. So if you're asking that the man bite him tongue, if God see it fit, God will make the dumpling miss and him bite that tongue. But the point I am making is to pray. Pray for your enemy, brethren. If you have a neighbor, many have job problem. Pray for your manager or your supervisor. Pray for your employees. Pray that God will deliver them. Let me go forward before I pray. Turn to the next one. This is taken from Luke 10 verse 2. This is Jesus speaking now. Now read this one with me. Therefore said he unto who? Unto them. The harvest truly is what? But the laborers are? It is in red now. What Jesus says. Pray he therefore to the who? That he what? So Jesus says, we need to pray that laborers go in the vineyard. Brethren, if it wasn't important, Jesus would have said we must pray about it. 
You know, when I just got baptized, I was in a gang in Fletcher's Land in Kingston, Jamaica. It was about 40 young men. And I was not the body seller. But let me tell you, every one of them look up and respect me as they done. I don't know for what reason. And many of these young men that I grow with, when God called me in March 8, 2009, when I decided to be baptized, I watched my friends cry I water and beg me not to baptize. But thank God I was obedient to the call. You know, brethren, when I baptized, my community became my first harvest field. Amen. Every day, I will visit my friends and tell them about Jesus. Amen. It was somebody's prayer that was answered. Yes. We are to pray that the God send workers in the vineyard. And I remember one day when I reached the community, as I turned the corner, about 10 young men on the corner, and as they saw me, everyone run. Because guess what? They knew I was going to tell them about God. <laughs> and a civil war break out in the community. You have Kingston Lane, Love Lane, Mark Lane, and these lanes are just 30 second walk apart from each other, and each lane warring against each lane. And I see my friends have to take up guns to defend their life. Every week I preach over one of my friends' body, just baptized, but what? The community say, I meet them more and preach. And because I never know the Bible, but because I know the people, I stood up on that funeral and I talked to the community with tears in my eyes and begged my friends to change their life. Yes, they are going to be next. Mm. But then I watch my 10-year-old, by the age of 10 gunmen killed, 9-year-old was slaughtered. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. I am praying that many of you who retire will go out in the Lord's vineyard. Amen. I am praying that some of us will take leave to walk our communities, to visit somebody and do Bible study with them. I am praying that when there is a holiday, we don't just go on beach trip, but we gather together and pray and go out in the community. Brethren, I am praying that it's not only when it is crusade we concern about souls. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he send forth workers. That's a prayer request, Jesus, that we must pray about. Now, let me ask you a question. Does Waterbury need some workers? Yeah. Workers are needed. I was driving last week, and I was saying to God, the people in America, they are too busy, Father. I have a book with 50 people every day, I stand on church and Utica selling my books because I'm still in school trying to get money to pay my tuition. But as I stand there, I see broken people. Mm. Sometimes when I should be selling books, I am praying and counseling people. Nice. People are broken. They are broken. I have a book with 50 names of people that I'm doing Bible study with. Mm. But I realize every time I invite them to church, they can't reach. So I was, as I was driving, I said, God, look like I have to leave the big people, them, and focus on the children. 
And as I turn about four blocks from where I'm staying, I see one lady in the cold with her two children. And I stop and I say, can I offer you a ride? And before I say ride, the lady reached in the car with her children. And as I began to drive, I said to her, you know I want to invite you to church? And she said, okay, I'm coming. Took her information, called her Saturday morning. She said, sorry, I cannot come. But I'm going to send the two children. And two of those children are here today. And it was last week I get a phone call, 12 o'clock in the night. A lady called, said she need a driver. She get my number off the street. And she needs somebody to carry her daughter to school. And her daughter is here today. Amen. And her brother. Now the reason I'm sharing this now, this young man's name is Paul. Paul mother says, the three weeks now, it's like he's not in his normal self. He will leave the house and don't come back for three days. He will leave in the night and don't come back. But praise the Lord, he's in church today. Amen. Now when you see him sleeping, it's because he cannot sleep in the night. But he's at the right place. Because God says his house is a house of prayer. And the reason why I bring him today because I know that he's going to get healing today. That's the reason why I bring him. Now, do you have any needs today, brethren? Do you want God to do something? I want God to heal this brother. And I, need, I am believing God for it. If there's a revival going to be in America, I'm asking God to let it start Here. right in this church. Hallelujah. So at this time, we're going to pray again. Sister, in number 260. And brethren, if yourself telling you you don't want to pray, tell yourself to get behind your Satan. Yes. Because you're going to pray. Amen. And we're going to pray that God send forth workers. Yes. Because you don't want us a crusade come up again, Bible up here to nowhere, and a big preacher come and preach. And like we're, we're, we're forcing people to baptize, we need to start work with them now. That's right. Now the harvest is ripe. In number 260. Over o'er me, Holy Spirit, bathe my trembling bathe heart. My Heart and fill me with fill me with thy hallowed thy presence. Hallowed presence. Come, oh, come, come, oh, come, and, fill, and me fill, me now. fill 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 me Jesus, now. come. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed fill presence. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh, come. come oh, and fill me now. Now as we stand together now on the second stanza, at the end we're going to go in groups of two. Gracious Spirit, though I cannot tell thee how, but I need thee, greatly need thee. Come, oh, come and fill me now. Fill me now. Jesus come, Jesus come and fill, and me, fill now. me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh come. come. Oh, come We're going to sing the chorus one more time as we find our prayer partner. Fill me now. That's the chorus. That's the chorus. Fill me now. Because I have use for the next verse. Come, my dear brother. Jesus come. Jesus come and fill, and me, fill now. me now. Fill me with. Fill Thy hallowed presence. Come, oh, come. come. Oh, come and fill One more time with the chorus. Now. Fill me fill now. Come me on, brethren. Now. Find a prayer partner. Come on, fill brethren. Come now. on. We're standing. We're finding Jesus someone to pray with. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with. Fill me with. Thy hallowed presence. Hallowed presence. Come. come. Oh, come and fill me Don't now. Fill me now, fill me now, Jesus come and fill me now, fill me with thy hallowed 
presence come, oh, come and fill me now.
and come good bless and save me bathe oh bathe my heart and brow thou art comforting and saving thou art sweetly, thou art sweetly fill me now fill me now fill me now Jesus come and fill Fill me with thy hallowed presence, come, oh, come and fill me now. Fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence, come, oh, come. And fill me now, fill me now, fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. Fill me with thy hallowed presence. Come, oh, come and fill me now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Lord. God is good. Let us turn to the next one. In the book of Matthew 26, verse 41. Hear what Jesus says. The next slide, please. Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray that he enter not into what? Now Jesus said to the disciples that they should pray that they enter not into temptation. We call this preventative prayer. You know church, as a church, we always ask for prayer for a member of the church when they get sick. We always ask for prayer for the young people then when they leave the church. We ask for prayer for the children when they start misbehaving. But hear me, Jesus said pray for them before they start misbehaving. We need as a people, you yes, see when you're healthy, pray that God keep you healthy. When you get a good pastor, pray that he remain humble and true. When you have good elders, pray for your elders that they remain good elders. And when you have good young people, pray that they remain faithful to God. Amen. This is a principle we must adopt. Don't pray only when something happens. So hear me, hear me wives. If you have a good husband, thank God for that husband and pray that he remain good. Can, I, can you say amen? amen? It's the same thing with the wife. If you have a good wife. no wife, um, husband, if you have a good wife, pray. No, make sure you get evil. Pray, make God keep her good. Because when them get evil at danger. <laughs> Brethren, we are to pray. No, if the disciples were praying when they were in the garden, they would not be caught off guard. When the crisis came, they were asleep. But Jesus, because he was praying, guess what? He was wide awake. So we have to pray that God keep us strong. Pray. Before you leave, don't, you know, I was going to Point Hill to help my father to carry some bag of cold that he used to burn to cook with back to Kingston. 
And it was a, it was a buggy van that we drive down to St. Catherine Point till Mendes. And when we reach, I pack 36 bags of cold in the van. It was four of us. I was in the front with the driver and two other young men was in the back of the van. And as we go up the hill, the, the last 10 bags of coal was on the top of the hill. And when we reached with the buggy and we turn and put the 10 in, make 46 bags. From the driver turned down the hill, there was no break. The brake cut from the vehicle. And it's first in my life I witnessed a big man cry like baby. And as he was crying, he looked at me and he says, Mullins, we dead. And the more he cried was the faster gravity pulled that vehicle down the hill. No, I should put a picture up there, don't move, to show you that point hill as deep corner and precipice is over the right and with the speed Reverend God sent an angel because it's only the angel of God alone could make that van with that speed turn those corner but there was one corner coming up near killer man corner that's very deep and a precipice if you don't make that corner you're going straight down and it's only rock. So while he was crying, I said to the driver, I tell the driver to just bank the vehicle in a bank. And when I told him that the driver was so smart, he was not a Christian, he was going to bank the vehicle right on my side. <laughs> you know, brethren, the two young men around the back, from the early world, bank, them just jump out of the back of the van. Them said they would rather run a race. And when, yes, they, they, they did chop up and broke up, and, but they rather take those chop up than that to crash with that van. And when I pull the door to jump out, I'm speaking about preventative prayer. When I pull that door, when I see the two of them jump out, I pull the door to jump, and when I see the speed, I just lock back the door. <laughs> to be honest, I couldn't bear those pain. And I locked back the door. And all I could do is to say, God, please help. And God said, Bridget, I'm telling you as a God leave, you can call, send catching and ask. God sent an angel and just turned the van. Just like this, and put it on the side. And the van skate and end right at the edge of the precipice. And when the glass broke, and I, when, it, when it turned over, I stand like this on the driver. And the driver under my football in, boy, boy. And God allowed me to leave that accident without one scar. Amen. You know why? Before I was going in the morning, I spent some time in prayer with yes. God. God didn't know that the devil was going to cut the brake. The brake was not going to work. Brethren, we have to pray before we go out in the morning. Jesus said, pray that you enter not into temptation. God was before me and I give him thanks. So that's something we need to pray about. When the sun set, we're approaching a new week that we know nothing about. We are to ask God to guide the children as they go to school. Cover us as we drive. And even if you walk, and even if you retire and you're at home, you still need to pray for God's protection. But look on the next verse, Romans 10 verse 11. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for who? For Israel, that they might be? We are to pray. Because to be honest, being a member of a church does not guarantee that you're going to be saved. What do you mean? Judas was a member of the church. Judas was a member of the church. It wasn't a preacher that preached to Judas. Jesus himself used to preach to him. And sad to say he's going to be lost. 
So we have to pray that the members of the church be saved. Pray that your children be saved. So my question to the congregation, what are some other things we should pray for? I write down a whole lot, but I'm asking you. I'm giving everyone a chance now to speak. What are some things do you think we should be praying for? Come pretty girl, there's a little girl with your hand up. Come, come get the mic, are you young? Yes, we want two persons with two mics to move around. Because we're going to work, we're go, you have some things. Let me hear what this young lady has to say, yes? And what is your name? My name is Sky. Sky? Skyla. Skyla, okay, Skyla. What should we pray for? We should pray um, so God can help the homeless shelters. She wants us to pray for those that are homeless and live in the shelters. Amen. Mercy. We have to pray that God help them. Anyone else? Are the children them? Come, children, you know, come at the front. You know, please, if all I want to come at the front. Because I'm want. i praying now that you guys sit at the front. Don't want to know around the back. <laughs> all children come right at the front. And she had her hand up. Yes, that, that little brother here. Uh -huh. Yes, what should we pray for, young man? Uh, to help homeless people. The same thing. Wow, these children have a heart of gold. He said we must pray for the, that God will give us a desire to help homeless people. That's a serious one because that need prayer for true. My name is Connor, and we should pray for the people who are struggling with bills and car rents and all those stuff. Wow. wow. Especially, like, for pets, too. Amen. I thought I hear a big amen for that. Amen. Because, to be honest, I don't know. Maybe none of in here are not struggling, but that's a request that is needed. We have to pray for some money to cover the bills. Everybody's still quiet. But thank you for that, my dear sister. We have to pray that God help us to cover the bills brethren some people are in debt up to their neck and all of them young gray hair coming out of their heads we are to we need some financial blessing yes just to pray that god will empower us to obey his words because there's a lot of times we read the word of god and we we um have it, having a problem to obey. Amen. So pray for empowerment to obey the word of God. Amen. Thank you for that. So as you mentioned about um, preventative prayer, um, when you look at 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You couple that along with um, pray ye that you enter not into temptation. Yes. A lot of times we enter. A lot of times we enter into temptation. Some certain thoughts go through our mind, and at that time we want to pray and say, "God, take this thought out of our mind." Yes. When those thoughts come in our mind, we try to, "Oh no, I gotta get this out of my mind. I gotta think about something else." What we need to do is we need to pray beforehand. Huh? Yeah, we, need to, we need to pray beforehand and pray that God will equip us with the weapons that is written in the Bible to, um, to defend ourselves when these thoughts come into play. So, you know, just an example, um, you know, if you're, you're driving or so ever and a, a worldly song comes into your mind, you've already prayed, God, equip me when those times come. You're equipped now. When the time comes, rather than asking God to take it out your mind, you say, it is written, you must not love the world nor the things that is in the world. If you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. Satan, get thee behind. So you pray for the defense beforehand. Amen. So thank you. Yo, my brother says that God give us a power through prayer to cast down imagination and every I think that exalt itself above God. So through prayer, preventative prayer, he's saying we can pray that even if our mind stray, that God bring back our mind. Thank you for that point, my brother. My prayer is that the Lord, as the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. I remember it was D.L. Moody that said, I've never prayed a prayer 
that God has never answered. Because when I pray, I pray the will of God. Yes. So when God really teaches us how to pray, the bills and everything, the eyes of our understanding will be open and all will be well. Amen. Anyone else? Here's an undone there. And after that, and I want to make a statement, share a passage about another important thing that we must pray about. I want us to pray for the youth that is experiencing church earth, that they do not leave the church because they are experiencing church earth, but God will give them the strength to deal with the church earth that they deal with on a weekly basis. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. There's one more, and that's coming right here. I believe that one, that one need a big amen, brethren. Because to be honest, our young people, they need our prayers. They need our prayer. So he, she said we are to pray for those who have been hurt in the church. Do you know of any? Don't answer. But we're going to pray for them. Yes, there's an on right down there. We need to pray when we read the Bible, we understand it. Sometimes we read the Bible, we don't understand it. And next thing we, read, we need to pray for, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we have the Holy Spirit, it will lead us and guide us. And we need a revival in this church. Thank you very much. So she said we are to pray that God, go down there first, Warren. And then my and then Whitney. So we are to pray, as my dear sister says, for understanding. We are to pray for a revival. And what's your third one? For the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, as my sister mentioned about the youth, um, I'm always thinking about my children going to school, especially here. I'm from Jamaica. Um, in the schools, they are getting so confused about who they are, their identity. And they are being taught in some schools that you don't have to choose to be what you were born. You know, as you, you can identify as a female even if you were born a male. And I am so worried about that, especially with my kids. So we need to really pray hard for our children who are going to, you know, these public schools. That, you know, they will know God and know who they are, their identity in Christ. Amen. Thank you for that. All right, Warren, bring the mic to Whitney. Whitney, I want to, to say. Um, so, I... Uh, my name is Whitney, and I want to pray for those who are struggling and those with disabilities. Amen. And those with disabilities and those who are struggling. Now, the reason why I ask everyone is just to give us a reminder the amount of things that are there to pray for. Now, if that is so, why do we pray so little? Why do we pray? Brethren, to be honest, to all things are, every breath we take should be a prayer. There's so much things to pray for. And that's the reason why, you know, sometimes when you hear the amount of prayer requests, it brings concern. But I am happy because earth has no sorrows. That heaven cannot cure. Do you believe that today? And at this time, we hear everything that everyone that said. So in case the last word and don't know what to pray for you here, we have a lot to pray for. And we're going into another series of prayer now. No, brethren, it was John Wesley that made a statement. And John Wesley says, 
that without God, man cannot do anything. And without man, God will not do anything. To be honest, God is depending on us. Because it is illegal for God to intervene. God said it that we have to command him to intervene. And that's how God said it. And now we are going to command. We confess our sins already. So everyone right now has the righteousness of Jesus over them. We are righteous in the sight of Christ. So now we are prepared to make our petition. The Bible says be anxious about nothing. But in everything by what? Prayer and supplication. Let our requests be made known. Let us stand together again. And in this session, we are going to put for the children, for the homeless to understand the word of God. You have heard everything everyone said. We're going to put these for the young people, them who are hurt in church and decide that they're not going to come back because church people wicked. They need prayer. We're going to pray. Yes, yes, my sister, you can begin. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. That calls, that calls me, from me from a world of care. World of care. And bids and me hot. Bids me at my father's throne. Make all Make my wants. All my wants and wishes known. In season. in season, come on, everyone, let us sing together. And grief, and grief, my soul, my soul is all ten found relief and all escape, escape the tempter snare. The tempter snare by the reach sweet hour. All right, we can find our prayer partner now in groups of two. Each person does all that one of the children, them want to split up the children. My petition bear. Oh. Each adult does all that child on. Engage the waiting soul to bless. He bids me. There are, there are four children right here. Can an adult go and just take one of them each, please? And trust his grace. I'll cast my every care and wait for thee. Sweet hour. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer. Hello, children. I, I, um, hello, two of you guys, come please. I'm begging you, please come. Kayla, oh, Kayla, have some money. One of those young ladies. Oh, two of them there. Come, princess. And take come. my flight in my immortal flesh one, shall rise to the seize the everlasting prize out out while passing through sing through the air farewell farewell sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer may i thy consolation shear till from mount peace god's love to heart i view my, view my home my hope and take my flight my flight in my, in my immortal, immortal 
flesh shall rise. To see the everlasting, everlasting, everlasting power. And shout. And shout while passing through the air. Farewell. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. of us, Lord, oh God, we're, we're kids. And I place, what's your name? Whitney. Whitney. I place Whitney before you, God. God, you know everything about Whitney. She reminds me of my little granddaughter. God, I just take her home. But God, I put these kids before you, Lord. You hear Whitney cry. She's praying to the people who's going through an invalid and whatever's going on. She's concerned that we so what should be concerned, but she's concerned God open a way and a door, whatever's going on in the little Whitney life. I ask for God to open up a way and a door and a blessing to hear about the situation that's going on with our children today, Lord. What they're learning in school. Lord, I know my granddaughter's going through the same thing. But God, I put it before you. There's nothing too hard for you to do for these children. What they're facing today, not like what we were facing, but God, I put them before you. I put my children Saturday with their one church. Not only to see me back time, but to bring them back. This, that's God, they're yours. It's so much easier. You've got to bring them back, but you could bring them back in your own time. I just got to live the life. And thank you for this session that equipped me to live a better life before them and the surrounding. Use me in whatever form. Lord, I'm not working, I'm not lifting busy, but you can use me. Use me, Lord. I'm a vessel for you in Jesus' name. What a friend you have in Jesus. All right, we thank you for the what a privilege to share the things God has done. Tell me as a heavenly father. I thank you for your love you to me, Lord, for those who can share me that spirit of God. Right now, Lord, our desire is to worship and to serve you. I pray for little Whitney, Lord God. I pray that you continue to, to place in her heart desire to love and to care about you, Father. Not only that, but a desire to worship and to serve you, God, and to be a little help with the 47 weeks, Lord. And for her parents and, and those that she knows will come as well. I pray for Pastor Eva, Lord, as you continue the healing process, Lord. And Lord, we pray for the children that will yes, come home. Yes. Oh, God, that they come back here with us, Lord. Yes. God, you promised us that you'll take our children. If we were concerned to overcome hunger, yes. and that you'll save our children, God, that's the yes, real God. Yes. God, and so we know that 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. You know, it's a blessing to have a mother and a father that prays. To be honest, when I was growing up, I never knew what was prayer. My father cursed bad word like it was the order of the day. And my mother wake me up and remind me to go to dance. To be honest, I remember myself from the age of two going to dance. Mercy. That was my way of life. Mm. And I loved it because I, I never knew anything else. But brothers and sisters, we serve a God of grace and mercy. Yes. He protected everyone. I am happy that he caused the rain to fall on the just and on the unjust. And though I was in a life of sin, going to party and dance and doing the things that is ungodly, I remember I was coming from school when I was in high school. I was in seventh grade and I used to DJ on the bus it was about a 30 minutes drive from my school, Holy Trinity, to Red Hills, Bottom, Belvedere, where I lived. And I used to DJ on the bus. And one day when I came on the bus to DJ, some ladies was preaching about Jesus. Mm. And when I heard, I want to DJ, and this lady was preaching, I get upset. And I said, woman, shut up your mouth. Mercy. I was in seventh grade. Brethren, thank God say never just strike with a lightning bolt and kill me at the same time. That's a merciful God. But, and today I have come to live to see what that woman was preaching. Mm. That is what's true. Mercy. And I told you I was, I was a dance man. And this is not my testimony. 
This is a testimony of a sister in my community. No. There was, I used to go to a dance called Dirty Friday. And about one o'clock, that's when the dance, the party get nice. And brethren, while the party was going on, the sound box exploded. Mercy. Boy! And everyone went home. When I got baptized, I visit a prayer and fasting and hear one little lady that live in the community get up in the church and, and share one testimony. Say, brethren, prayer works. Mm. She said she was at home. Cause dirty Friday keep a Friday night in you know what come after Friday? Sabbath. Sat Sabbath. The woman was to go to church and the dance was pumping in her ears and she could not get to sleep. And she said she get up the night and said, Jesus, Jesus. But the woman make God bust the son box death. Yes. Brethren, I am telling you that we serve a God who answer prayer. Amen. I was sitting in the congregation and when the lady said it, to be honest, I am very inquisitive. So after the service finished, I went to her and I said, Miss, when, when this happened? And brethren, the exact timing where the lady tell me, it was when I was at the dance. Mercy. God will hear the prior of his children. Amen. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. And delivered him from all his fears. I saw the Lord. And he answered me. So the next one. I want to look on healing. Prior for healing. There are a lot of sick in the church. There are a lot of sick among us. Am I telling the truth? So I was in Kingston in Portland, Jamaica, and a young man, he, he is an alcoholic. Brethren, every time I see that young man, he was drunk. And he drank liquor from morning to night. And sometimes he don't even eat any food. Sometimes I wonder how that young man make it. But every time I see him, I sympathize with him. And I always reach a prayer and say, God, I can't deliver this young man. And so one day as I close, because my time is coming to a close. One day, I was walking. And the young man saw me. And he says, What's up, pastor? But brethren, you could smell the liquor. It was about 8 o'clock in the morning. You can smell. You can see that he was drunk. On that morning, I said, God, enough is enough. Brethren, I went and I held on to his hand. And I, 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 I felt burden for him. And I looked him in his eye and then I started to pray. Brethren, the young man, though he was drunk, you could feel the strength. And when I call upon God, the man just fainted in my hand. He became weak. And he fell. Guess what? The demons mm. left him. Mercy. God delivered the young man. God can heal our sickness. Yes. I will never doubt God. If you ask him for healing last year and you don't see him, we're going to ask him again. Is there any sick among us? This is the one that I love. The Bible says, James chapter 5, is there any sick among us? I write that one down. He says, let us call, let him call for the elders of the church. Let, no, look at this, you know. No, when a member of the church sick, should the church visit them? Because it shows what? It shows caring. But the Bible says that is a sick should make the first step. You know the reason why many of our sick don't get healing? They're not following what the Bible says. 
The Bible says if you're sick, don't ball and say, now go back to the church because none of the members them not come look for you. God said you should call for the elders. Amen. Many have cancer, stage 2 cancer, and the family member know and they hide it as if sickness is a secret. And when it reaches stage 4 and the doctors give up, you come to the church. Please pray for Sister Betty. When you know from it they are stage 2, you could have asked the church. Regin, while we have pride, listen to me. If I have AIDS, I'm going to send a request. I'm begging to pray for me. Even when his sickness was full of pride. Mercy. Oh, can you, Regin, sickness can happen to anybody. Oh, if you have pride, for free for ask for prayer, for healing. All right, children, now let me call you up and give you the mic to preach. Be quiet. So call for the elders. It is your act of faith God is going to use to bless you. Because it is a norm to when a person is sick to rush them first to the hospital. Am I telling the truth? It's a norm. If I am preaching and I slip and lick my head, someone will maybe run out of the church and call the ambulance. When I'm in the presence of God, where is the faith of the people of God? Mm. And you may say Mullins mad, but check up as Paul. The Bible says Eutychus sat at the window. He was listening to the sermon. He was a young man in the church. He, was, he had potential for greatness. But the, the flesh took over and he fell asleep. The devil found him to sleep. Be careful or you sleep in church. Because you took a drop and broke him neck. So you can drop asleep and lick your head on the decks in front of you. Stop sleeping, church. But God understands if you fall asleep. And when he drop, brethren, if it was today, I am telling you the amount of fire be great out there, sir. And church locked down. Now, how much pastors today would go over that body like Paul? And pray that God bring him back to life. How much elders will do that, Sister Audrey? Mm -hmm. There are some. I know that God have some. Oh, yeah. Because I would do it. And maybe when you say oh, I am mad. But I rather go over that body and say, God, you see that this young man. You know what the servant of the Lord said? Read Acts of the Apostle. She said that he, it was not yet his time. It was a premature death from the devil. And that was the reason why God bring him back to life. It was when Apostle Paul go over the young man, he lift him up. And he said, God, brethren, what a privilege to carry everything to God. Brethren, do we truly believe who we are? The man said, God, look at the man's neck broke. That I want terrible death. But our God can straighten about neck. Yes, sir. That's the government we serve. And what did God do? Did God listen to Apostle Paul? Oh, yes. No, my question is, can God do it again? Yes. So this will be my final prayer in this session. I don't know if any Shotin is sick or if any member of the church. I was listening. I never hear any announcement to pray for the sick. But, and maybe you right now in here, you are sickness in your body. Because some of us sick and don't even know. Mm. We do all our checkups, and sometimes the doctors say you're all right, and you're even in a pain, and I tell the man you're in a pain, and him saying nothing, nothing. But our God is a healer. I am closing, and he's healing just the same. So I'll close with this testimony. I. Eh? You know, brethren, I was. You know, I tend to overwork when it comes to God. Like I can't say no. You know, I can't say no. I preach for 12 months one year in Jamaica. I finish a cruciate Saturday and I start one Sunday night. And I preach for four weeks every night. And Saturday night and Friday night is rest night. And every day I'm in the field. Every day I'm in the field doing Bible study. And sometimes it's when it's time for me to preach, I reach a church. And have to go up and start preach. And one night I was preaching. As I was about to make the altar call. I got a stroke. 
You know what caused his stroke? I was overworked. I was tired. And I don't eat meat, so sometimes I hardly eat. You know, sometimes I preach in crusade and the church not even provide food. And I'm not working, so where should get the money from to buy food? But God sustained me. And that night I got a stroke, the right side. My face turned on my right side. I had a mic in my right hand, and my hand could not move. Mm. Standing before a church. At the time my wife was in the congregation, I was dying, and not even my wife knew that I was dying. Mercy. It was my ignorance. Sometimes we really cause sickness on ourselves. But my left hand could move. I could not speak. And I pulled the mic. I used my left hand and do like this. And the first cell, I just come and take the mic. And I do like this. I can't believe said the virgin didn't even realize that I couldn't walk. Bridging, that's how we have to know God for ourselves, you know. You'll be dying among the church, bridging them and them dead, they are laughing. Why them laugh? Because they're not understand. I was dying. Mercy. And I, I crawl go around the back. And this is where I get vexed with God. I say, God, I used to serve the devil. I was, I could not sit. Because I, uh, my right short side was dead. I said, God, when I was serving the devil, mm. I used to work from night to morning. I used to sell weed. I used to ch carry 100 pounds of weed from Moby to Spanish town. And I said, God, the devil protect me. And no, I am preaching for you. And in your presence, you're telling me that I catch a stroke. Bridging, I said, God, it looks like it better me serve Satan. I was real with God. Mercy. And as I talked to God, something just touched me and immediately me get healing. Amen. God healed me the same time. There is still a bomb in Gilead. Amen. He can heal you, my sister. I don't listen to what doctor say. Yes, I take his diagnose and then I go to pray on the herbs but that night not even herbs could save me only God himself and the same God that healed me he says that the prayer of faith shall what heal the sick and if he has commit any sins they will what be forgiven him so as my dear sister Argy go, we're going to pray for healing. And um, yes. I just want to share a testimony as well. As you were talking about James 5, this testimony just came back to me. I remembered it was 2009 when I got sick at school. I was a teacher then. And we had PE, um, sports day that day. And I was there, very active, used to teach physical education and all of those things. And I was there, and we were, you know, had sports day, so my house and the different houses. So I was there running with the kids and saying, run, you know, cheering them on as they ran. And I was there running in the heights of um, on my prime. And I remember I started to feel a little, you know, woozy-like. So I was saying it's probably the heat, the early morning heat. So I went and I got a bottle of water, and I drank the water. But after I drank the water, I felt worse. So I'm now self-diagnosing. So I'm saying, oh, probably it's my blood sugar get too low because I'm using up so much energy. And I went and I bought a bag of sugar pop. I don't know, people from Jamaica, you know sugar pop? Those are like a red ball. No, man, they, they, they like cheese tricks. The red sweet one, sugar pop. Yeah, and I bought a bag of that because it wasn't thing sweet that was there. And I was eating it, trying to get my blood sugar up, you know, quick, quickly. But the more I ate it, the worse I felt. And I remember I walked over to my, my colleague and I said to her, I said, Taylor, I'm not feeling well. And that was the last thing I remembered. I just passed out. 
And that was about minutes to 11 in the morning. And I never came back to until after 8 in the night. I knew nothing. All that period in my life is like a blank slate. But what happened is that after that happened, I was unable to walk. I could not help myself. And I remember I was bedridden. And one Friday evening, I'm just cutting it short because I can't tell it's a long story. The Friday evening, we're having family worship. And James 5 came to me and I read it. And I called the elders and the pastor of the church. And they came the Tuesday to pray with me. And they prayed and they left. You know, they had a healing service all my family and friends. And so they were there and they prayed and they left. I'm just giving a chunk of the, the story because it's long. And after they left, that, when they prayed and left, and, you know, they, they prayed over the olive oil and they anointed me and left. I didn't feel better right away. I was still in pain. If I laugh, I felt pain. If I cried, I feel pain. If I laugh, I was in pain. If I yawn, I was in pain. If I sneeze, anything I did, it was just painful. And around 2 o'clock, the, the, the Wednesday morning, I heard a voice say, get up. And I'm saying, get up, I can't get up. You know, we love women, sometimes love to talk too much, you know. I'm saying, I can't get up. The voice said, get up. I said, I can't get up. And the voice forced me to say, get up. And I jumped up in the bed. And for the first time, I moved and there was no pain. And I said, get up. Bless you. And the voice said again, get up. And here am I. But I get up already. The voice said, get up. This time I realized the voice wanted me to stand up. Because before then, once I stood up, it was like daggers going up. In the bottom of my feet. Daggers. It was so painful. And I stood up. No daggers. I said, what is this? And, you know, I, the, the voice said to walk. And I, I was my knees. Because if you're not, if you're not walking for, um, walked for six months, you know the muscles and you're weak. So I'm there. I'm still a little wobbly. But I walked and I held on to the wall. And I walked. Because I wanted to know that this was real. It wasn't a dream. I was dreaming. So I walked to my daughter's room. And I walked and I held on to the wall. And I walked and I walked. And I went in there and touched everybody. Because my cousin and my sister, they, they came to help to take care of me. And I touched everybody. They had deep sleep. And I walked back to my room. I could not wait for 5 o'clock to come the following morning. Because my sister, every morning, 5 o'clock, saints of God, she would come and open the windows to get me fresh air. Because she did not want me to get bed sores. She would turn me and give me fresh air. And the morning when she came and she was opening the window, so her back was to me, I sat up in bed. And when she turned back around, saints of God, and she saw me sitting in the bed. She started to bawl, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And everybody in the house woke up and ran to the room. Because now your people from down the street ran up thinking I was dead. Because they knew I was very sick. So everybody running over the hill wanted to know what was happening. And when they came in their saints of God, I stood up. I stood up and we had a hallelujah service. And as a result of that, four persons gave their hearts to the Lord. And so we never know why the Lord allow us to go through our crucibles. It might be for somebody's life to be saved. And so saints of God, let us keep on being faithful and trust the Lord because there's a bomb. Ha! There's a bomb in Gilead. To make the wounded wall. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded wall. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. 
soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and I think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded wall. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. 